Hey friends, it's Liz, your official craft nerd, and today I have got some new shabby chic fall DIYs for you. So let's get started with this floral basket wall thingy. <laughs> As you can tell, you guys, I had no other uh, way to describe it. So uh, a friend of mine sent me a few of these thrifted items that they picked up at a thrift shop and it was basically challenging me on what to make with them. So I'm starting off with this little Christmas, I guess it was a Christmas basket. It had like a coat hanger shape, like a tree. Uh, that wasn't gonna work for me. So I completely removed that tree coat hanger thing out of this basket and knew I was gonna be painting it. So. The theme for these DIYs today, they're going to be black and white. Uh, I know I typically do a lot of just these softer pastel-y type colors, uh, but with it becoming fall, I do like to get into the more rustic colors, the deeper, you know, uh, fall colors like the burnt oranges and black and, you know, white and things like that. So if it's not your thing, you guys totally understand, like you can make this however you want. If you decide to basically updo some kind of a, you know, thrift item. So once my basket is completely painted black, I'm taking this really adorable pumpkin stencil that I got off Amazon and it is listed in my Amazon store, which the link is in my description box below if you're interested. And I'm just going to take some of my plaster paint and I'm going to go over my stencil. Now, this is a weaved basket, so it's not smooth. It's very, you know, bumpy and there's a lot of grooves. So just understand that the stencil itself is not going to come out looking perfect, but I like that. <laughs> so I think you guys know me pretty well by now that this is kind of my, my thing. I like it looking a little, you know, rustic and rough and old and used and all of that good stuff. So I actually really like how this stencil ended up coming out and I decided, you know, last minute I was like, ah, oh, you know, it needs a little bit something more and I decided twine. Twine was going to do it. So I'm basically just going to wrap some of this twine around the top of this basket just to give it a little bit more of that shabby chic rustic look that I definitely love and you know to break up the monotony of it being black so I know that you guys you know again are used to seeing a lot of the lighter colors and things like that for me but you know it's just it's getting to be that time of year and I really do love using black in a lot of my decor and I really believe that black does go with shabby chic too you know I've said it before farmhouse doesn't own it <laughs> so but the next step once that basket was done is I also received this like little shelving I think it was probably like used to hang things it was missing one of the little hanger dowels so I just pulled the rest of them out and that little shelf like popped right off so Whoever made this initially, they just used glue. There was there was no nails, there was nothing to it. And so it easily came off and sanded down real nicely. Uh, I did take some of my wood filler uh, that I had on hand and I'm gonna fill up those little dowel holes down there at the bottom uh, just because I didn't plan on reusing them for anything and wanted them to be completely covered up so I love this wood filler I think I picked this up from Walmart and it just easily squeezes in those little holes and you just basically smooth it out I put enough in there to make sure that it was nice and even uh, throughout my whole you know board there and didn't want any kind of indents or grooves or anything so once it was nice and filled up then I'm going to take my sanding block and just go over it and it was perfectly smooth it worked out fantastic and it made for a really nice surface for me to go ahead and paint so again I'm taking some of my Waverly chalk paint this is in the color ink I absolutely love this black uh, if you don't have this you can definitely use the apple barrel black or any kind of black 
paint that you prefer to use it I think it would also look really good if you did just a stain on this um, it, again if black isn't your thing uh, this could definitely have looked really well with just like a deeper brown uh, type of stain uh, you can have even done the basket now I because the basket had like those red and green strips in there that's why I wanted to use the black I felt like that was going to be the easiest way to cover that up uh, but you know again it's definitely user preference on you know what you want to to do with your type of flip projects and you guys know I definitely love 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 doing thrift projects I loved making old things look new again or you know just have them fit my style aesthetic you know and for cheap I think that's probably the best thing is that it's affordable to do so if you're new to my channel guys just real quick um, I welcome you guys I'm definitely happy that you're here and joining in with all the good nerdy fun um, and as you see here while I'm also saying that I'm just gluing this basket like directly onto this wood plaque originally had it intended to do that but I decided you know what let's just combine these two I think it'll look better and it worked for me so anyway back to my whole welcoming spiel you guys thank you so much for joining me and uh, again my name is Liz I definitely love doing all things that are shabby chic vintage rustic old used whatever and thrifting is probably my biggest passion I do like to throw in Dollar Tree DIYs every now and then but this is definitely where my heart is so welcome welcome now back to what you see me doing here I just make a very simple uh, finger bow basically just wrap a bunch of twine around my finger I cut it off take a little another little piece of the twine and just tie it in the middle easy peasy great bow there's plenty of ways to do bows and I've said it many times before I am not an expert on bows but does it matter and you know for me the bow just adds to that extra shabbiness that I was looking for for this so this is the final project put together I added some of this burnt umber orange flowers that I got from Dollar Tree and I absolutely love it okay guys so for this next project I'm actually taking this really adorable little pumpkin decor piece uh, that I actually thought was actually pretty cute by itself uh, but again I want to keep my projects very cohesive with one another so we're gonna change it up so of course this little tin wording stuff they have on there had to go uh, I did struggle a little bit getting this <laughs> these off because they were on there really really well so I'm using my little plower pl plowers flowers y'all oh my gosh pliers and I'm removing the lettering and basically just gonna sand down you know any rough spots from the removal process as well as I'm gonna take some of that wood filler again fill in any of the little you know markings or the holes there just to make sure that I get a nice even surface when I do my paint so I'm taking my Waverly chalk paint and ink again and I'm going to give this a full coat so I'm going to do the front the back the sides the whole thing initially I thought I was going to keep that little tin leaf twine thing on there and pretty much changed my mind going through it I was like no nothing else that I have is going to have that you know twine look to it or not twine the tin look to it so I didn't want to keep it on there so I just popped that sucker off and went ahead with my painting now the great thing about this Waverly chalk paint and ink is that it is pretty much a one coat paint so meaning you're not going to need to do multiple multiple coats of this stuff to get a good coverage like it is amazing how well it coats so my next step after that is I'm going to take some of these or I'm not some of these but one of these silk screen uh, stencils now these are made by plaid uh, they are absolutely adorable I'm slightly obsessed I think now with silk screen stencils because of how well they go on and that paint is also made by plaid it is specifically for these silk screen stencils and the little applicator as well it is phenomenal like I'm obsessed and I do believe I have these linked in my Amazon store as well if you guys are interested but when I tell you this is like the easiest of all easy when it comes to stenciling like it's fantastic so I absolutely love this little 
you know, shabby chic look and type stencil. And I thought it'd be perfect on this pumpkin. You just take a little bit of this like paint paste that they have and that little applicator like scraper tool. It's almost like a little squeegee tool. And you're just going to just rub it all down your stencil like just making sure it's nice and clean and smooth you can definitely make sure that it's an even coat just because it's a squeegee it's not a brush it's it's very very easy very very easy to do you guys like seriously i am obsessed <laughs> i am on the hunt now for more and more silk screen um stencils just because i love how they come out and it's so quick and easy to do and honestly it's just so soothing to do I don't know what it is but watch this you guys simply peel this up and look how perfect that stencil is I mean from immediately doing your stencil and you can peel it up like that other stencils you have to be really really careful with because they still tend to leak sometimes or you know have that little uh, seepage underneath and you know I don't always get bothered by it too much, but I'm telling you guys, I love, love, love how these silk screens are just so awesome and perfect with that. So anyway, I'm just going to dry it up just a little bit, just in case something didn't get completely 100% dried. And that's only because I like to take my sanding uh, block and kind of rough it down a little bit. I tend to do that after any stenciling I do. I love the effect that sanding it down a little bit gives it. It gives it much more of a cohesive look like it's been there forever. Uh, it, it's just definitely one of my favorite things to do. So of course, again, keeping with the cohesiveness of all my projects here today, I'm taking some of the twine and I'm just gonna wrap it around the stem of my pumpkin. Uh, definitely wanted to break up, again, the monotony of all the black paint and it just gives it that extra little bit to make it more of that rustic shabby chic look that I adore. And it was really easy. Again, just wrap it all around the top of that and glue it down on the very top. Super simple. And then again, I'm going to make another bow, just a real quick twine finger bow. And as you can see there, I'm literally just wrapping a bunch around my fingers. You can do it as many times as you want. That just depends on how big and I guess extra you want your bow to look. <laughs> uh, and then just take a piece of that twine and wrap it around the middle, tie it up a couple times. Wham, bam, that's it. There's your bow. Fluff it out a little bit. And I'm just gonna glue it right on the base of my stem. Uh, the next step now, and I apologize ahead of time because my lighting changed, it got darker. I tend to work in natural light more than anything. So please excuse this ugly orange light because I did not have my lighting set up available for me at the time. So anyway, I am actually gonna take a piece of that shelf that we ripped off of the other piece that we used previously. I figured I'm gonna try to use as much of all of these items as possible. So I'm just going to paint that little shelf piece, uh, of course, with the black just to keep it going with everything else. And I decided I want to use this as a base for my pumpkin. Now I just used hot glue for this. But again, if you want this to be more permanent, I definitely would suggest using some wood glue as well. Uh, but just for the sake of getting this video done, as you can tell, like I said, I was losing my light. I was trying to get these, you know, cranked out and ready and everything. So I just used some hot glue. But in the end, it works perfectly well. I, I loved how it looked now that it was standing. Um, the piece itself, you actually could hang up on the wall if you wanted. I just thought it was kind of small. Um, but it does have like the little holes in the back to hang it up if you would have wanted to. Um, again, taking my sanding block, I'm just roughing up the edges, but that was it for this. Now you do see a couple little leaves on there. I had some, you know, from another piece of foliage and I just went ahead and glued those in there just to add a little bit of oomph to it. So tell me what you guys think about any of these projects down below. I definitely would love to hear. Okay guys. So since I've already finished my first three flip items that I received. I decided to give you just a bonus one. So I had this little uh, little wooden carousel horse that I picked up at a thrift store for like a dollar. 
and I knew eventually I was going to do something with it because it was just really cute and it was blank basically it was begging to have somebody do something with it so I of course keeping with the theme of everything I'm going to paint this completely black every nook and cranny is going to get painted black so while I'm doing all of this I definitely want to encourage you guys to check out some of the channels that I'm going to link down below these are friends of mine that we all got together and sent each other these awesome little mystery boxes of thrifted items that we found and we wanted to challenge each other with what we could do with them so definitely check out each and every one of them so you can see who I sent my box to and really just to get this inspiration there's so much inspiration to be had from all of these creators because we all have very unique different styles and it's just so much fun to see so Emily from Farm Charm Chic she actually sent me my goodies so Emily I hope I did you justice with the things that you sent me <laughs> it was a challenge for sure so anyway back to what I'm doing here this I just decided I wanted it to be kind of I mean if you think skeletons are spooky whatever I absolutely love skeletons I love Halloween and I wanted to have kind of a piece that you know can kind of transition into that just fall Halloween vibes and everything so I googled the skeletal structure basically of a horse and I actually found this picture of like somebody that painted this on their horse and it was actually pretty cool but I thought you know hey this is giving me how I'm supposed to basically come up with this skeletal design on my horse and you guys <laughs> again this is totally like if it's your thing awesome you definitely don't have to do this if you don't want to but I really really enjoyed it and you know it's it's really funny I'm sitting here watching this and watching the shadow of my like giant head here with my big mom bun <laughs> Oh, the lighting. Again, I hate this lighting. I'm so, so sorry, you guys. Next time, I will be more prepared and make sure that I have, like, adequate lighting in my workspace so these videos don't look so blah. Anyway, once that was completely painted, you guys, I went ahead and just sanded it like I do with everything. But I love, again, how this looks when it's said and done because it definitely just, it just brings the piece out more. Now, again, we're bringing out the twine. I wanted just to kind of wrap a little bit um, around the pole. I had thought about maybe, you know, making hair and all that, but I was like, no, that's that was too much. It wasn't really the idea that I had in mind for this. So I just basically took some of the twine and kind of wrapped it around the carousel pole on the bottom and the top as well. Um, the only thing that I can say is when I did it on the top, I kind of went in the other direction so it looked a little wonky to me but I mean if that doesn't bother you then oh well it, it's whatever again I leave my little oopsies and errors and whatever in my videos so it is what it is uh, I took my sanding block and again I'm roughing it up a little bit just hitting those edges definitely like the worn you know loved look <laughs> when I do these things so I honestly when this was all said and done I just really really enjoyed it um, again I'm gonna make another finger bow I think I did one on every project actually that's probably a first for me but uh, another finger bow out of the twine and this was just to add you know again just a little bit more detail to my little I guess dark shabby chic horse <laughs> I'm not exactly sure uh, how to label it but whatever I think it's cool so um, just make that quick little easy bow and I'm just going to stick it right there on the base of the tail and this was how she turned out and of course in better lighting uh, but I really really love this little carousel horse it was probably my favorite so far okay guys and that's it for this video here is all the different projects, you know, one by one and all together. Uh, I really appreciate, again, my friends, uh, Brandy, Angela, Emily, for all of you guys working to meet with me on this. This was so much fun. And you guys, if you are new and maybe coming from their channels, again, I really hope you enjoyed this. I hope you stick around. 
please, please, please hit that subscribe button below and make sure to hit the like button as well. Uh, definitely leave me a comment. Let me know where you're coming from. Anything at all. I, I love to hear from you guys. I really do. And thank you so much. I really can't say that enough. I appreciate each and every one of you guys that visit me every single week. You really show me a lot of love and it means the world to me. So until next time, you guys stay safe.